over the years, this is a brand new one. Now I referenced this, these verses many, many times, uh, but uh, the thought occurred on me, I'd never used this particular verse as a text per se. And don't be ignorant. And we think of ignorant as an ugly word, don't we, sometimes. But we're all ignorant of some things. Uh, I pulled out my old Greek uh, lexicon yesterday that I hadn't looked at my Greek in a long time. But one of the first words that we learned in uh, studying the Greek language was genosko, which means I know. I know something. The word ignorant means choose not to know or just simply ignore something. Uh, and we do a lot of that. But in 2 Peter chapter 3, we want to read beginning with verse uh, 3. Second Peter chapter 3. Knowing this first, that there may come, no, that there shall come. Not a, not like a weather out there, not something that uh, could happen. This is something that will happen. There shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. And I took the liberty to underline these statements when, when I was preparing this. For this they willingly are ignorant of. That by the word of God, the heavens which were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. For by the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. That was Noah's day. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store or reserved under fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, Here's where I chose my text from. Be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is for the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years of one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. But his long suffering to us for not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, into which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, Look for a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. And then we we'll read on down 1 Thessalonians 4. Apostle Paul said, But I would not have you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be ignorant. Don't stay that way. 
brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you saw not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Don't get that. He's going to bring him with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Finally, Romans 1 verse 13. Paul said, but now I would not have you ignorant, brethren. That's the main thing I want us to focus on there. Uh, these many times that Paul, the Lord used Paul to make the statement, don't be ignorant. Know these things. God does not want us to be ignorant. When I started seminary, old brother A.J. Kirkland, the president of the school at the time, said, fellas, it's not a sin to be ignorant. It's a sin to stay that way. us this book we call the Holy Bible. It's separate from all other pieces of literature. It's God's words. It's perfect. Not my word. Not man's word. God used man to write it, but he inspired it, didn't he? He gave us a written revelation of him that we might understand him and his workings. And yet, who are we? He's a potter and we're the clay. But he wanted us to know this much about him so he gave us these 66 books from different writers over a period of years and I can tell you this again, there's no greater piece of literature, there's none comparable to the Bible. Amen. If anybody says to you something about the book of Koran, you tell them to take it and trash it. Right. It doesn't compare to our God's word. In verse 8, we read there earlier, uh, the first Second Peter there, verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Don't be ignorant, but how many people do you know today that intend to read the Bible, they just don't get around to it? That's their intent, is one day read the Bible. And I'm telling you this, my friend, that's the most important book you can find, and it should be what we're doing with our time, that we might understand and see God working today even. But these 66 books that make up the Bible were given to us. And we read it. After the days of the tribulation are over, after the thousand year reign, John said, and I saw a great white throne. And the books were opened. What books do you suppose they're talking about? I believe that it's the 66 books that God gave us over these years and years.
the book of ages. The revelation of God that he gave to us. You think we're going to get before God one day and say, well, Lord, I intended to uh, study your word, but I guess got to watching days of our lives. I believe that was the name of one of them. And, and folk, young people, you didn't know it, but that's been going on for years. Another world, was that one of them? World turns. But it's what people do with their time. I'm going to hurt some toes here. This is a ball game coming on a little while. How many of us over the years have literally wasted our time watching ball games? Well, I even tried to play a little bit. I wasn't big enough for anything, but I uh, tried to play a little bit way back yonder. And for the guys, it's a macho thing to do. But I'm telling you this much. Studying the word of God shall override all of our activities. Because we're going to be judged by these books. But I like what it says. John said, further, when, when the books were opened, he said another book was opened. And that's the one you want your name in. Because it's called the Lamb's Book of Life. But don't be excused from the other 66 books are there. But in verse 3, we read a moment ago, it said, Knowing this first, there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust. In verse 4, right under verse 3, saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. They, in other words, they deny the flood. And they deny the fact that Jesus is coming. They know that's the hope of a Christian. And they'll say, where is the promise of his coming? Anything to deny the author of life. In Kentucky, in the last few years, as a man raised a hundred million dollars and built an ark the size of the one described in the Old Testament. And people go a long way to Kentucky and I'd like to see it myself. I don't need to see it. But he built that in defense of the word of God. People said it just couldn't hold all those creatures that God made. Folk, man wouldn't believe if a fellow rose from the dead neither would he believe if he saw a replica of the ark all that money a hundred million dollars my opinion could be spent better elsewise Amen. either you believe God or you don't you don't believe part of what God says God gives us a record of the flood and the record of the building of the ark and how that he preserved mankind through Noah and his sons and their wives. But scoffers come and say, how'd they get that many little animals on that uh, ark? Well, number one, who ever said that you know, they'll show a big old elephant or a creature going on that ark, a picture will, but why not take a baby elephant that's got his life ahead of him where he can grow up and expand and, and multiply. Uh, but it, it, it's irrelevant, isn't it? God took care of that. And if we don't believe the first chapter of Genesis, 
and we can't believe the last chapter of Revelation is 22. But verse 7 says, and look closely again, but the heavens and earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire, against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. I, I just read that, didn't I? That folk, this old earth is going to burn up. All these little material things that we kind of get uh, partial to and we put so much emphasis on, can't keep them. <laughs> can't keep them. Can't carry them with you. Because they're going to melt the fervent heat. And once again, in verse 8, let's, let's look again. He said, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. One day is a thousand years. The oldest known person that God made, that created, according to the records of the Bible, was a man by the name of Methuselah. He lived 969 years, so he didn't live a day for the Lord, did he? The Lord said one day is a thousand years. our time short on this old earth. Yesterday I was thinking I, my birthday jumped up on me and I said, have I been here that many years? Well, I have. Thank the Lord. He gives me those days and years. And they, folk, life is a gift from God. And I'm convinced the more I live it, the more I realize it, the more I need to push into life. And do what God put me here for. He put us all here, didn't he? But one day, and just think about it, we're going to get to be with the Lord forever. Now, I was thinking about that being forever. And right along with my message this morning, the first thing I do is when I get to Houston Chronicles, I take out the cartoons. And I always check myself out. They've got a little game in there where they find six different things that doesn't match pictures and what have you. And I see if my old mind can still decipher those uh, differences in the picture. And I always do come out. I've had to come out. Now, sometimes I cheat. If it takes me a little bit longer, I'll go ahead and look and see what they said and what they were anyway. <laughs> but this morning, I always look up top of the page in the family circus. Is there any of y'all ever read the family circus? Well, my wife religiously cuts them out and sends them to our relatives and what have you. But today, the little boy asking his daddy, his daddy's right back against the tree, he said, Daddy, what's an eternity? What's an eternity? And he, his dad began to explain. He said, well, Billy, an eternity is forever. And then he steps again. He said, it's an immeasurable expanse of time. Then he thought again, he said, son, it's a longer time than the mind can begin to imagine. And then he said, finally, he says, eternity is without beginning or end. And the little boy said, oh. Boy, the dad says, what do you want to know for? 
The boy said, Mommy says it seems like this year has lasted eternity. <laughs> Raising four little kids. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> But I thought it was appropriate that the Lord had them to put that cartoon in there today to match my message up about an eternity. One day with the Lord, it with the Lord as a thousand years. Y'all get your Sunday's paper today. I'm not advertising for the Chronicle, but it's there. <laughs> Verse 9. I like this, folks. If we don't see verse 9, we fail to see the whole part of it. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. But his long suffering to us for. Somebody said God wouldn't send anybody to hell. Get right on. Look what he said. God's not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. He's willing that all be saved. Y'all agree with that? He's not prejudiced, is he? He's long-suffering. He's not willing that any of us depart this life and go the wrong way. But then verse 10 is the good news. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The day of the Lord will come, it says. It must come. It's coming suddenly, and the heavens will pass away. In verse 11 and 12, seeing them, that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. What kind of person ought we to be, knowing this? Folk, eternity is involved. It's natural and normal for us to love our family. Most all of us, all of us have had some loved ones that have gone on. You ever think, what if you never, ever, ever saw them again? Oh, guess what eternity is. I mean, you blot out forever and never and ever. Can you mind grasp that? That's why it's so critical that we do as brother Enrique had a singing today about working, that we work till the Lord comes. It's the essence of life. And finally the last verse I will refer you to is found at the bottom of the page in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13. Paul said, but I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that you saw not even as others which have no hope. Don't weep for your loved ones because they're like all state. They're in good hands. Right? We all just passed through here. Some of us have a little longer to stay than others. But ever how long the Lord leads you leaves you here, He's got something for you to do. And folk, only you can do what God assigned for you to do. Something that if you don't do it, it won't get done. My prayer is today that you'll look at life a lot differently, realizing that our time is brief, that we're all headed for eternity, 
We're eternal beings already. We're just in a temporal body. And be ready for that day. <laughs>